we've been having a look at what it means to be led by the Spirit of God. Keys to hearing God's voice. Now we've learned that God is speaking to us. And there's so much noise in our lives through people around us, through media, the devil speaking to us, our own turmoils, worries, fears. There's so much that can get in the way. And so we need to be able to focus that out. Hello, my dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg. This week, we've been having a look at what it means to be led by the Spirit of God. Keys to hearing God's voice. Now, we've learned that God is speaking to us. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And so if we are hearing His voice, then how come I haven't heard it? If someone says, you know, I, I, you, you say Jesus, Jesus said that I hear His voice, but I don't know if I do. No, you have heard it, but maybe we've confused it with other things. And there's so much noise in our lives through people around us, through media, the devil speaking to us, our own turmoils, worries, fears. There's so much that can get in the way. And so we need to be able to focus that out. Just the same way a radio station, if it's not on that dial, if that dial's not focused exactly right on that station, we can hear what we call static. You know, if you take a station off, off center, you get that noise, that white noise behind it. We can know sometimes when you get close to the station, you can hear the person's voice, but you can't hear what they're saying. It has to be focused in on that exact frequency. And when it's on the right frequency, you will hear the station was there all the time. So there are certain things that do cause interference, like, for example, strife and division. That's why... The first key is to practice the presence of God. And we spoke about that yesterday. If you did miss it, I encourage you to go onto our website. The programs are there. You can go and listen to them there, or you can get them from our office. And so you'll see there, by practicing the presence of God, say, Lord, I know you're with me. I do it from the moment I wake up. My first waking thought is that I know my God is my God and He's with me. And so I'll speak to him because he's there. Morning, Father. It's so good to be able to enjoy another day with you. Thank you for your grace. You know, you are my God and I love you so much. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And so I want to practice the presence of God. And by practicing the presence of God, I stay in a place of expectancy. My key to receiving anything in the kingdom of God is expectancy. If you don't expect to be healed, then the healing won't happen. So hearing the Word of God, studying the Word of God, reading the Word of God gives us a promise that we can receive as expectancy. I found out from the Word of God that my God saved me. So as a result, I called on His name. What happened? I was saved. When I found out that God heals, I could stand in faith for it and I saw His healing manifest. When I saw that God blesses my seed and that because of the tithe, the windows of heaven are open and I am blessed, I receive the abundance of God. By expecting it, I saw it manifest. So can you see expectancy is the key to receiving. So we need to practice that all the time. Now, one of the other things is to understand is that strife and division, is, is that's like the static on a radio station. Remember the Bible tells us faith works by love Love literally is the power force. So that's why you can understand when Jesus always says, when you stand praying, forgive. And we're supposed to be forgive 70 times 7. He kept talking about forgiving, 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 forgiving. Why do you think that is? Is it just because God doesn't want His children fighting with each other? No, there's a spiritual law that if we are involved in strife and division, the Bible says there's every evil work. And so through strife, through division, if I'm thinking about somebody and I'm arguing with them, or have you noticed that sometimes when we have a problem with somebody, even when they're not there, we're still thinking about it. That's noise and interference to hearing God's voice. And so I want to make a decision. You know what? 
if I'm going to hear God's voice, I need to put that aside. I lay it aside, I forgive that person, I release it in the name of Jesus. Now what happens is I position myself to be expectant. I'm practicing the presence of God. Now that I'm in that place, that wisdom that is in my heart, the ability to be led by God, how do I draw that out? Come and have a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Paul gives us instruction here. He gives us insight into how he lives. Look at verse 1. I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom declaring to you the testimony of God, for I determined to know, not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Now there's a vital key right there. We understand that no matter what we teach, it has to come back to the crucifixion of Jesus, His resurrection from the dead for people to get saved. So whatever we do as a ministry, the key towards whatever we do is to get people saved. We don't do things just for ritual purposes. We don't do things just because it sounds like a good idea or we want to feel better because of it. Everything we preach has to come back to the knowledge that Jesus was crucified. And through His crucifixion, our sins were paid for in full, and then He rose from the dead. And so today is alive. We can preach the gospel and lead others to Jesus. And verse 3 he says, I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. My speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. So we understand that there's a certain amount of human knowledge. We can tap into wisdom, but that wisdom, human wisdom can only go so far. Human wisdom can only go as far as the rules and the knowledge of laws that it has available to it. Science can only go as far as the knowledge of the laws that it has available to it. And yet he says, yeah, I didn't try and persuade you with human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age are coming to nothing. Now listen to this. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Underline that. The wisdom of God in a mystery. Now, just get a hold of that. Remember, James said, if we lack wisdom, we can ask Him for it. Christ has become for us wisdom. Now he's speaking the wisdom of God in a mystery. Now listen, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. So when God hides something, he's not hiding it from you. He's hiding it for you. Sometimes people say, well, you never know what God's going to do. Or God's ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. You never know what God's going to do. No, we do. He says, yeah, He's hidden it. So maybe I don't know it in my natural mind at this point in time, but He's hidden it for our glory. Which, look at verse 8, none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So what He's saying here is, if the devil knew the plan of God, he would never have crucified Jesus. Why? Because in crucifying Jesus, where the anointing was in one person at one time in a physical location on the earth, if He left Jesus alone, that anointing wouldn't have got any further than just the body of Jesus. But by Jesus being crucified, He opened the way for all of us to be saved and all of us to be filled with the glory of God. Now, if the devil saw that plan, he would never have crucified Jesus. So it was hidden in a way that no one could see the plan. But once the plan was ready to be manifested, God opened it up. Now, verse 9. I has not seen, ear has not heard, nor have entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. So God has great plans for you, okay? But you may not know them in your natural sense. But listen to verse 10. God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. Isn't that good news? So your mind may not understand it. Your eyes may never have seen it. But yes, the truth, God has revealed them to you. How? Through His Spirit. The moment you're born again, Holy Spirit enters into you and the full plan of God is already being revealed to you in your heart. 
The Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Listen to this. What man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of man which is in him? Except even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. So the Holy Spirit knows the plans of God and He lives within you. Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God. Why? That we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Isn't that good news? So the fact that you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit in you. He says one of the reasons we've received the Spirit is so that we can know the things that are freely given to us by God. So how are we going to know that? Well, have a look again. It says over here in verse 7 that we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. We speak the wisdom in a mystery. Now, the wisdom is hidden in us, but we speak it in a mystery. Now, when we first hear the word mystery, we usually think of something that we don't know. That's, that's what mystery means. It's a mystery. What does that mean? We don't know what the answer is. But here's the good news. You can speak that mystery. You can speak the mystery even without even knowing it. How do we do that? Come and have a look over here at 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Look at verse 2. He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. There you go. That's how we speak mysteries. We speak mysteries by speaking in a tongue. Now, sometimes people get hooked up on the speaking in a tongue. Like, you know, are we supposed to be speaking in tongues? Because when I read about speaking in tongues, it was somebody speaking in a language they didn't know, but others heard them in that language. Yes, that is a type of tongues. You must understand there are different types of tongues. The way I like to explain it is there are different types of sports. So imagine somebody gets a whole manual, the manual on sport rules, and he studies the sport rules. This is all ball sports. These are all different types of ball sports. And he studies and he looks and he looks at each chapter, studies it from cover to cover. He now knows all the sport rules. And someone invites him to a game of soccer one day and as the ball goes past him, he picks it up and he sprints down the field and he dives into the goal and puts the ball down. Yeah, he thinks he scored. But everybody's looking at him like, what are you doing? The ref's blowing his whistle. They're calling him back. What have you done? He says, well, I scored a try. No, friend, this is soccer. No, but I read in the rule book that if I carry the ball, I can carry it as long as if I want to pass it, as long as I pass it backwards, I can go and score a try. No, no, you can't confuse the rugby rules with soccer rules. So the same way speaking in tongues, there are different types of tongues. There's the tongue where one prophesies. That tongue requires an interpretation. There's a tongue where somebody speaks in a language that they don't know, but the person hearing it hears their own language. There's a supernatural interpretation happening mid-air, so to speak. That's from the book of Acts. We see that in Acts chapter 2. And then there's this tongue here. He who speaks in a tongue, listen to what it says, does not speak to men but to God, but to God, for no one understands him. So if no one understands him, that's not in any earthly language. They're not understanding it in their home tongue. They're not understanding any other language. No one, no one, no one understands it. That means no human and no devil. Now you can understand why the devil gets upset about tongues. He will blame tongues even on himself. Say, no, that's not from God. It's from, that's from the devil. And, but no, listen to what it says here. He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God. What do we call speaking to God? Prayer. This is your prayer language. So there's a type of tongues when you pray, you pray in a prayer language. Now with that in mind, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18 verse 4, the words of man's mouth are deep waters, the wellspring of wisdom is a flowing brook. Wisdom is deep in the heart of man. Remember the Bible says out of our heart will flow rivers of living water. That's wisdom. Proverbs 10 verse 11 says, The mouth of the righteous is a well of life. So this is not talking about the Old Testament because the Old Testament, they couldn't be righteous in their, own, in their own ability. That's like filthy rags before God. This is prophesying. We only righteous because we received the righteous of God. And he says, Our mouth is a well of life. What's a well? 
Waters run deep in the earth. A well digs down into the earth so that you can draw the water out. So the well gives you access to the water. Wisdom's deep in your heart. Your mouth is access to that wisdom. And look at chapter 20, verse 5. Counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. So how do I draw it out? Well, the Bible tells us, uh, look at Proverbs 20, verse 27. The spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart. So your spirit is God's lamp to search out the inner depths of your heart. Amen. So with all that information now, let's have a look at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit helps in our weakness. So what would be our weakness? That's our lack of wisdom. He says here, we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. So I may not know what to pray for, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. That's speaking in tongues. That's our prayer language. Now he who searches the hearts, remember Proverbs 20 verse 27, it's the spirit of man searches the heart, knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession according to the will of God. So get a hold of that. Come back with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and you have a look at verse 2. When you speak in a tongue, you speak the mysteries of God. Speaking in tongues is like that pump that digs down into that well and draws the water out. So the wisdom of God is in my heart. As I pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit is making intercession for me. He is speaking according to the will of God. He's giving me the words to speak. And as I pray, I'm speaking out the mysteries of God. I'm declaring the future. I'm declaring God's plans for me. Now, the most exciting thing about this, come and have a look what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and come down to verse 13. He says, If I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, my understanding is unfruitful. So there's that natural wisdom that Paul was talking about. But I don't need that. When I pray in tongues, my mind's not involved. Verse 15, what is the conclusion? I'll pray with the Spirit, and I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit, and I also sing with understanding. Now, with that in mind, look at verse 13. Therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. Hallelujah. God gives us the permission that when I've prayed in tongues, I don't know what to pray for. Lord, there's a situation I need the answer on. I need wisdom. I'm asking you for wisdom. And as I pray in tongues, as I trust God, praying in tongues, I'm praying the perfect will of God, the perfect wisdom of God. And once that peace enters me, I reach a place of, yes, it's answered. I can say, Father, now I ask you, please reveal to me the wisdom. Reveal to me what I've just prayed. And what will happen is God will reveal it to you. It may not be in that moment. Sometimes I go to bed at night and say, Father, I believe I know what to do. And you may wake up in the morning and you just know it's been revealed into your heart. You know exactly what to do. And now you have the wisdom of God leading you and guiding you. Friend, I believe that you've heard the voice of God. And I pray that you would be filled with the Spirit that you trust God to be able to receive and to pray in other tongues. And by doing that, you are led by the Spirit and you're able to make wise and accurate decisions. Now, I want to show you how being led by the Spirit is going to help you tremendously with the seed that you sow. I'll see you right on. Allen Bank Ministries is coming to your area. If you're in the Durban area this week, Alan Bank will be ministering at the Trinity Christian Family Church Conference taking place from the 26th till the 28th of October. For any information about the times and location, please contact us here at Alan Bag Ministries. Did you know that God speaks to us every day? Would you like to hear His voice and have every question answered that needs answering? God is 
speaking to us all the time. No matter what decisions you need to make, God wants to help you make wise decisions that will help you succeed in life. Which tells me I need to be able to hear Him. In this new series by Dr. Alan Barrett, you will learn that you have an awesome ability not to only recognize God's voice, but also hear the voice of God so that He can guide you into the abundant life Jesus paid for us to have. God wants to tell me because His desire is for you to prosper. His desire is for you to succeed. Contact us at these details. Order your series today and learn to recognize and follow the voice of God's guidance toward a successful future. The ability to hear God's voice is so critical in so many areas of our life. And it is as important when it comes to our giving. As you know, Friday is our giving day here at Allen Bag Ministries. And I want to show you how you can take what we've learned this week and use it in determining your seed so that you can have optimum harvest. Have a look here in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Verse 6, he says, I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may have and abundance for every good work. Now that, that, just that verse alone tells me we are set in God's plan and purpose to have a very prosperous life where we can be in a place where we have all sufficiency in all things. That means whatever we have need of is provided and have an abundance that's over and above for every good work. So we can sow into other works. Now, to get to this place where grace abounds towards, He gives us the key. He says here that each one give as he purposes in his heart. Now, how's that link up with hearing God's voice? Well, you heard earlier on that God speaks to us within our spirits. And so within our spirit, that's our heart. Now, He doesn't say give as you purpose in your head. Because if my head had to decide what I can give and can't give, it may be much less. It might not be the right amount. God knows what your harvest is. So just the same way a farmer, if he wanted to bring in, let's say he's got uh, 10 hectares out there of farmland that he wants to produce a harvest in, he's got a formula using 10 hectares, he can work out how many bags of seed he needs to buy. Now let's say he needs to buy, I don't know what the formula is because I'm not a farmer, but let's just ignore everything and say, let's say I need to buy 10 bags of seed. And if I only go and buy one bag of seed and sow one bag, I'm going to get one-tenth of the harvest had I sown 10 bags. Now, God knows what your harvest has to be. So He knows what seed you need to sow. And He will breathe that into you. I'll do that very often. I'll say, God, I know that I'm going to be giving here and I need to sow towards a specific harvest. What should I be doing? And so I'll pray in the Spirit and I'll listen for His voice. And now He will tell me in my heart what I need to give. And so now I purpose. I give as I purpose in my heart. Now it's not grudgingly of necessity because God told me what it is. And I'm willing to obey Him. And when I do that, I do it cheerfully. Now what happens? It pleases God. Why? Because I've heard His voice. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. I know that faith pleases Him, Hebrews 11 verse 6, and now I can give in faith, and it pleases God. And when I do that, when I give the way God purposes me to give, my harvest that comes up as a result of that seed is exactly what God determined it to be. And so now by faith, I can celebrate and say, I give generously and I reap generously. So I wanted you to know that because many of you have already sown into this ministry, and God has a great plan for your future, and He may be speaking to you right now about the seed to sow. And so if He is speaking to you, or you determined to sow into this ministry, I want to thank you so much. We really do appreciate you for doing that. Our details are here on the screen. 
You can go online and there's a great facility available to make it very easy for you. And we're going to pray over your seed right now. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for my friend and my partner as they determined today to sow according to your purpose. As you've purposed them to do it, they've purposed in their heart, they've made a decision to obey, and they are acting on that leading. And right now, based on that, the harvest you have due for them, we call it in the name of Jesus. We call that seed blessed, may it multiply and increase, and we give you praise for it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, praise God, I believe that prayer is answered. It is the weekend. We're going to get together in our various places of worship. I want to encourage you, if you're not yet in a spirit-filled, word-based church, find one nearby to you. Get a, be a part of that congregation. Let the pastor know you're there to support and help the Word of God being preached. If you are in Cape Town, please come visit us. We have got so many campuses now, and there's one nearby you. And if I am in the building, please come shake my hand. Let me know. I'd love to meet you. Other than that, you have a great weekend. I look forward to being with you again on Monday. This is Alan Bagg reminding you, Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. We want to thank you for your partnership with Alan Bagg Ministries. When you connect with us, you are part of many receiving their salvation. You are part of many being touched by God's love. And you are part of many believers being equipped to accomplish all that they are called to do. Know that you are being prayed for over every day and know that we are in agreement with God's promises manifesting in your life. When you partner with us, you will also receive a partner pack that will both build your faith and give you understanding of the difference you are helping us make. Thank you once again for your faithful support and prayer. We have seen so many lives touched as a result of your partnership. If you're not in partnership with us yet, join us and make a difference in this world. Join us here at the Bay Christian Family Church for a powerful time in both praise and worship as well as in God's life-changing Word. For any details on our many locations or to join us via live stream, visit our website. This week's Wisdom for Life programs are available in digital format so purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us at any of our details. Yeah,